Welcome into On Deck. I'm here with Mr. Wesley Fricks, the museum director of the Ty Cobb Museum. It's nice to be here, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be on deck. Can you tell me what you guys try to do here in Royston, Georgia at the Ty Cobb Museum? I'd be delighted to. Uh, we have been claiming to be the home of Ty Cobb for uh, a very long time, and, and ever since Mr. Cobb died in 1961, uh, we really uh, have fueled our claim to fame as being the home of Ty Cobb. So we we built this museum here in 1998, and we wanted to show the other side of Ty Cobb. And so we're just looking to uh, host uh, uh, more and more people every year, and we're proud to, uh, uh, of our claim to fame, and we're proud to be the home of Ty Cobb. So we we have a, a nice museum here that we like to. Uh, you know, allow people to see, and and uh, we host we have a host of people from all over the world. Well, you mentioned you know show the other side, and people get to know the name of Ty Cobb. They get to know a certain image of him. You would go as far as to say a lot of that is overdrawn, over you know, fantasized. Can you help the the next generation, my generation, sort of draw the line between fiction and reality? Yeah, we. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. You know, we, uh, we're we proud of Ty Cobb's record. He'd done a lot of things for people uh, when he didn't look for credit. And that's that's what we want to show here. There's, uh, there's two images of Ty Cobb. There's one image that got thrown off track, if you will, when Al Stump wrote the book in 1961. And then there's the real Ty Cobb, and we just... Uh, well, ever since this museum started, our goal has been to show the other side of Ty Cobb. Uh, as far as his image is concerned, you know, Mr. Cobb uh, spent a lifetime, his lifetime being a very generous man and doing uh, many wonderful things for people, whether it's personal or, or on a large scale. And we have some history of that here, right here in Royston with the Cobb Memorial Hospital and the Ty Cobb Educational Foundation. You know, to anybody, any sports fan the Al Stump version is going to be the one that you know people cherish in a way because it's what we grew up on right it's what we grew up hearing what would you say to the people that you would encourage to rethink their image of him well I ask people all the time to uh, make sure that whatever sources or material that you're using that you go to the source and the facts don't believe the legend that Al Stump created. Go back and look. We, we have the very wonderful luxury of having the ability to look things up at our, on a, at our fingertips with the advancement of technology in the last 20 years. And I just ask people, you know, go to newspaper sources, go to historical documents and records and, and testimonies from people uh, when these, the, the day these things happen. And you're going to get a better, more accurate image of Ty Cobb than reading some of the embellished stories that, that has been written by authors like Al Stump. Well, you know, take whatever people want to think about Ty Cobb out of the picture. We do have one thing that everybody knows is fact, and that's his play on the baseball field, his stats, his that's numbers. Right. Do you, would you say that Ty Cobb is the greatest player, all-around player of all time? I, I've said that for quite a while, and you know people don't like to hear it because they have their own preference and heroes yeah. that they like to say is the greatest. But if you look at the numbers, you know a 367 lifetime batting average, 4,191 base hits, 892 stolen bases, 12 American League batting titles, nine in concession, or you know the numbers pale in comparisons to others. And and there's a lot of great players out there that I love and respect and. Uh, you know, they're Hall of Famers too. and But when it comes down to it, when you compare the stats and then um, uh, some other things, you know, Ty Cobb was easily the greatest player that ever played the game. The thing to me that stands out other than what he did on the field is the length, the amount of time he did on the field. He had a 367 batting average over 25 years. That'll never happen again. That That's true. You know, one thing people don't realize is uh, – to bat 367 almost means you have to fail at hitting seven out of ten times, yeah. so or six out of ten times. So you know, to be able to uh, to hit 367 in a season is a is a remarkable record. It easily probably gets you a batting title, but to be able to bat that 
uh, high of a batting average for that long is just incredible. I mean, he was a very remarkable player, uh, had a great hand-eye coordination and, and just was an all-around great athlete and applied himself every day. You know, he was always the first to get out on the field and the last one to leave and was always willing to help other players who uh, needed a little hitting advice or uh, fielding advice, and uh, he shared that with people uh, freely. You know, Ty Cobb got the most votes uh, in the first class Hall of Fame over Babe Ruth, over Honus Wagner, over everybody that anybody can think of of that era. What do you think that says about not only what he did on the field, what other people thought of him in his day? I think it was a, a validation of his greatness and being, you know, considered the greatest player. Um, you know, I just want to just kind of concerned about who the four writers was that didn't vote for him yeah. and what their reasoning was. And, of course, we'll never know those things. But, you know, I, I remember reading about researching the a whole process of voting in the Baseball Hall of Fame and, and, and reading about how their selection process was at that time and, and when they started counting the votes and, and they got to 100 votes and Ty Cobb had, you know, a hundred out of a hundred votes, that was incredible. They stopped and took a break and and realized how incredible that was. And then when he got to 200, you know, they just thought, they, they, they paused the momentarily again and they just thought that was great. And then, you know, when whenever they came to a writer that didn't vote for him, it was a reason to pause again. So to me, you know, I just think it was incredible uh, uh, seeing how he went through that process and became the very first player ever inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York. And I think that to him that was one of the greatest accomplishments. You know, everybody considers uh, Babe Ruth his arch rival. And I think that's because Babe Ruth came in and changed the game with how many home runs he mm -hmm. hit versus how many base hits were hit. But you could also argue Ty Cobb changed the game with how he played. You know, he came in and he put tenacity on the field and he didn't take no for an, a for an answer. And that's something I've always appreciated about it, and I'm sure you're the same. Do you think there will ever be a player to just completely come in and change the way he changed baseball? Well, it's difficult for us to see into the future. Baseball is constantly changing. They're changing the dynamics of the game uh, on an annual basis. And I think the game eventually, uh, there'll be enough change about it to where it will enable somebody to come and, and, and change the game, uh, the game in a way in which it's never been changed before. Uh, that's just the evolution of, of the life we live. And, uh, but Ty Cobb, uh, when he broke into baseball, it was, it was a lot more of a gentlemanly game where, in a sense that uh, there wasn't quite as much as aggressiveness uh, being exerted out on the field. And so, like, for instance, you know, getting a, a base hit to, to right field and uh, – lobbing and having the fielder lob the ball back to the infield, uh, they don't do that now, you know, t t because of Ty Cobb and how he played the game. You know, it's like you field the ball and get it back in. You, it, the game become more mechanical. Fast-paced. Yeah, well. and so, um, but someday, in some distant future, there'll be a reason why the game will be changed and there'll be an opportunity for another player to come in and change the game in a way in which it's uh, never been changed before. But that, you know, that remains to be seen. Well, you probably know a lot more about Ty Cobb than just about anybody that will watch this video or any, anything else. What would you tell people, including myself, what is your reasoning for your admiration, the sole reason that brings you back to study Ty Cobb more and more? Well, you know, I grew up here in Royston, and uh, I played on the same sand lots as Ty Cobb did growing up, and I wanted to be a baseball player, and of course I, I didn't have the same quality, qualities and skills that he had, but growing up in his hometown in, of Royston has a, a, a certain bond to it, and I, you know, I consider Ty Cobb a neighbor, and so, you know, uh, going out and researching and trying to defend him in ways in which uh, he should be defended it's it's just a bond that was created by growing up here and, and loving the community and loving uh, just witnessing what he had given back to this community over 50 years, 60 years ago. And so uh, we're honored by that. And if there's any way that, at least speaking for myself, that I could help Mr. Cobb in some way, then that's sort of what I'm here for. 
Ty Cobb, no doubt, has a legacy like none other. Uh, his, his name is known by so many people across the country, around the world. What do you think his greatest legacy is? Well, uh, he was certainly the, uh, considered by the people who knew him during his playing days and uh, uh, decades that follow as the greatest baseball player. People will always remember him for that. There's no doubt about it. He, he, his name and legacy will live on into the coming decades and possibly centuries. But I think what he would want to be remembered for is for the way he gave back to his community and his state and the state of Georgia, uh, you know, with his the Ty Cobb Healthcare System and the Cobb Memorial Hospital, as well as the Ty Cobb Educational Foundation, which to this day has given seventeen point five million dollars to needy students in Georgia who want to further their education and, and obtain a university education. So, you know, this the Al Stump people that, you know, believe mm -hmm. it or, or who created it. That that era, to me, the, the more you dive into the actual information, the less you believe it. That's right. The, the more you watch the movie, things just don't add up. That's right. And I really do believe that that era is going away and people are starting to realize that something doesn't add up. Yeah. What would you say to people to encourage to dive into more information on Ty Well, Cobb? Well, the, the first thing that comes to mind is... is People that don't do that and they, they believe the legend, they're missing out on an opportunity to see, uh, to get to know a, a very, a man with a very remarkable career, a very remarkable personality who, who always was finding ways to do things for others. And Lord knows that, you know, we're in a, we're in a life that, that needs more people like that. We're in a world that needs more people like that. And, and to know that Ty Cobb uh, was that way, it, it's just really remarkable. And uh, I would encourage people uh, not to believe the Al Stump legend that he created and to do the research yourself. That's what we try to show people here in the museum. We try to show them the facts and let them come to their own conclusion. And, you know, the facts being, you know, court records or, you know, newspaper articles uh, of accounts uh, uh, on the day these things happen. Because really, um, you, you, you can't waver from that. You know, there's there's not a whole lot of room, wiggle room to to misinterpret something when it was written the day it happened. So whatever the papers portrayed Mr. Cobb during his lifetime uh, when he was playing baseball, I, I'm going to believe that a lot more than I'm going to believe some guy who was trying to make a buck off of his legacy. And Al Stump's book on Cobb and the, the magazine article, True Magazine, Ty Cobb's Wild 10-Month Fight to Live, you know, to me, is built a lot less on facts. So, um, I encourage people not to uh, to to get into believing that that part of the myth. Um, Ty Cobb is a great guy, and he he did a lot of wonderful things for people. And he requested that they not be made public because he didn't want to be eulogized for what he had done for people. And that's just another element of admiration that I have for Ty Cobb. Yeah, you know, Al Stump was with him for three weeks. Ty Cobb lived to be 75 years old, some odd yep. years. I think there's a lot more about his life that Al Stump probably didn't come across, didn't discover. Yep. And I think it's kind of our duty in this generation to go back and find out more about him and learn what the man he really was. And uh, we, were, we had a double header with Philadelphia. And uh, they had us beat in, uh, uh, in the ninth inning seven to two and we had a man on first and there were two out and I was at bat against the great Waddell so I went up to the bat with all the apprehensions in the world against the great Waddell and he had me two strikes and two balls and that's a very serious situation I don't know how I hit the ball I'll tell you the truth uh, I just swung, just at a, and I happened to hit the ball over the fence for a home run, which tied up the ball game. Check out the Ty Cobb Museum in Royston, Georgia. It, you won't be disappointed. TyCobbMuseum.org.